It's really strange that this is an author that I own eight books from, all on hardcover, and multiple copies are signed. So what happened? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, Bookworms and Brent Weeks fans? I don't know. We'll find out. Mike back to talk a little Brent Weeks today, and I want to get out there in front of this and say, guys, if you're looking for just a rant video, this isn't what this is going to be. A question that's come up on the Discord a lot lately is, what's the deal with Lightbringer? Why did you drop Lightbringer? What is the story behind this? Because they go and they on the channel and they see that I did the review of the first two books, and I was like over the top with praise about them. And now I'm at the point where I won't even finish the series. They want to know what happened. So I figured this was a good opportunity to talk about that. Now look, I want people to understand that this is my opinion. I am in no way telling you why you should not read Brett Weeks because I might be in the, the loud minority on this one because I know there are a lot of people who have finished both of his series and love them quite a bit. So I'm definitely not detracting from that. I'm just talking about why neither of these series have gotten finished by me and what exactly happened and why he might be on my do not read list now. So uh, again, these are just my opinions. So I hope you will take that. I know a lot of people, their first foray into fantasy was the Night Angel trilogy. And they have a lot of fond nostalgia for it. And I am definitely not here to trash that. This is going to be just why I have decided to give up on Brent Weeks. Now, look, there are going to be minor spoilers in here. Nothing major uh, but there are some things that you might look at in hindsight and say, hey, I wish you hadn't told me that. So I just want to get that out there. I can't do a video like this and be completely spoiler free without talking about why I wanted to, why I wanted, why, why I've stopped reading this gentleman. But again, it's also something without context that you're not going to, it's not going to ruin anything for you. So the story of how I discovered Brent Weeks is a little more interesting than how I decided to uh, to give up on him. I mean, honestly, if you wanted to just like cut right to the chase, uh, this right here could answer why I decided to give up on Brent Weeks. But we're going to get a little more into it than that. Let me start by saying how I discovered this. There was a friend of mine I was really trying to get interested in reading The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. And I did this by explaining the magic system to him. And same with Mistborn, telling him why Brandon Sanderson kind of differentiates himself as someone with a really, you know, complex magic system. And he seemed really interested, but he said, you know what, this sounds a lot like the magic system that's used in Lightbringer. And at the time, I'm like, I think I've heard of that. I'm not really sure. I'd heard of Brent Weeks, but all I'd heard of was Night Angel. And he starts telling me about this magic system. And I was like, that sounds really awesome. I'll definitely, you know, add that to my list of stuff to read. And I looked the author up and I said, like, okay, no, he's got these three books for. I tell you what, I'm going to start uh, at the beginning with an author. You know, I've heard really good things, yes, about the Night Angel trilogy. So let me start there. And then, uh, you know, that'll kind of give me an idea of what the guy's all about as an author. You know, quick reads, they don't look big. And then I can dive into these big, giant, massive uh, Lightbringer books. And then we'll see where we go from there. And that's kind of how I started on this journey here. Now, let's talk about Brett Weeks as an author first. Two big series under his belt, obviously, Night Angel and uh, and Lightbringer. Uh, eight books. I believe there's a novella for each series. There's a graphic novel for Night, Night Angel as well. Uh, he has been on the New York Times bestsellers list multiple times. I believe all of the Lightbringer books have been on there. I know that some of the Night Angel books got on there. Uh, so he's uh, sold like about... 4 million copies of the books, and he's even won the uh, David Gimmel Award for Fantasy Novelist in 2013. So this is a very, very talented gentleman with quite a following. He's very, very successful. And I'm just a dude with Wi-Fi, so I'm not here to tell you why, hey, this guy's terrible. So again, if you're just looking for someone to shit on Brent Weeks, I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to tell you why I think I'm done with the guy. Uh, let's talk a little bit about my actual journey here. I started reading the Night Angel trilogy in 2017, picked up Way of Shadows, it was tough. Uh, it was a tough read for me. I never really clicked with Azoff, like, at all. I really couldn't uh, relate to him as a protagonist. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the side characters were just really forgettable. I didn't care about the villains at all. Really, the only one I really liked was Durzo. And I felt like he was almost like a background character. You really never saw much of him. And I'm sure that changed over the course of the trilogy. I don't know. I didn't finish the trilogy. I started reading, uh, God, what was the second book called? Uh, Shadow's Edge, and I dropped it. I did not finish the series. That's as far as I got into that. So I kind of wrote it off as, you know, this was a first-time author. Maybe he kind of struggled out of the gate. I don't know. 
But my biggest problem with that series is I felt like he couldn't make up his mind. Did he want to be young adult or did he want to be grim dark? It felt like pick a side. I know you're trying to rope both these audiences in. Obviously, they get you good book sales. Who might argue? I get this. To me, it just felt very bipolar. He couldn't decide what he wanted to be. It felt like he had wrote this epic fantasy series and then he'd spent all weekend playing Assassin's Creed and said, you know what? I'm going to kind of write that into my story. It felt just so shoved in there that it never really clicked with me at all. Like I said, I didn't really care about the characters. And for me, in fantasy, you can have great writing style, you can have great world building. If I don't relate to the characters, I'm usually not going to stick to it. And the characters never grab me. Now, I bought this signed <laughs> anniversary edition after the, after the fact, which a lot of people find funny, because I said, you know what? Going in with a different set of expectations, maybe I'll enjoy it more. So I did say I might give it another chance someday. I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, because I bought that while I was still on a Lightbringer high. That brings me to Lightbringer. This same friend really urged me, look, Night Angel's like a thing, but Lightbringer, trust me, it's like night and day difference. He's a much better writer. It's a much better story. I think that you'll like it a lot more. At the time, there were four books out. We were coming in the countdown of The Burning White. And I said, oh, this is perfect. You know what I'll do? I'll read one per month leading up to the release of Burning White. This will be perfect, perfect timing. It was right when the channel was taking off, you know, by the way. It was just getting started when I decided to do this. And I picked up Black Prism and I loved it. I was like, this is wonderful, it really was. Night and day, his writing was better. His magic system was awesome. I just, I, I could not believe it. This, this magic system, outside of Sanderson, I hadn't seen anybody do a magic system quite this good. It was deep, it had layers. It was just fascinating to read. I could not believe that this was the same author. It was a, what we call chromaturgy, I think, which is based off of the color spectrum. Really, really just wonderful idea. Almost made me think about like Green Lantern in like a fantasy. I was, I was all about it. I could not get enough of it. I read that first book in like two days. I was just so high about it. I could not believe how good this was. So I picked up book two like immediately, a little bit before my, uh, my, my planned one per month. And I blew through it too. And the burning, uh, the, the the binding knife, I like did even better than Black Prism. I was like, holy shit, this is like my new favorite like modern fantasy series. This is this is impressive. I can't believe how much I like this. I had incredible characters, had a coming of age story, uh, wonderful, wonderful lore, a lot of the stuff. The villains were good. I loved uh, what Andros. I thought Andros was just such a layered villain, so so good, even more so than the actual like main villain i think of the series uh spectacular female characters and karis and uh, uh Liv. i was just like over the top about this i love the deeply flawed characters of gavin and corvin i could not believe i hadn't heard more about this series like what is the deal why have i not heard about this more then i read the broken eye right as i was about to say that uh night angel was just an anomaly this guy was getting his wings and now he's there i read the broken eye and look it was good it was kind of a letdown after after um, The Blinding Knife, but I still thought it was good. I saw some cracks in the foundation, but I wasn't worried. I wasn't alarmed yet. I was like, okay, this is the middle book in the series. It's kind of transitioning. It's giving more time to Tia. I was confused why my favorite characters had all of a sudden become background characters. Uh, Corvin and Karis just kind of disappeared. Liv was basically a cameo. Uh, you know, Gavin was let's just say sidelined the whole book. I was like, what's going on? I was like, I like Kip a lot. Don't get me wrong. I uh, don't know what this new fascination with Tia is, but hey, again, it's okay. He's a stat. He's building his world. He's building up his characters. That's cool. I can take one book of this. Then the next book happens and not much changed. In fact, the only thing that changed was the quality of the story. Look, there are series that you will say, yeah, this is the point where it jumped the shark. And then there's this, okay? I can't think of a book that encapsulates the term hate read for me more than what Blood Mirror was when I read it. I could not get through this book fast enough because I was just struggling with it so bad. The twists in this are so over the top that I feel like M. Night Shyamalan would be like, yeah, you might have took it a little too far here, Mr. Weeks. Uh, I just... <laughs> I already felt like this book was that thing where a fantasy, say, a fantasy author says, hey, I've got this big hit on my hand. Why don't I extend this series a little bit and get an extra paycheck in there? So it wasn't just that I felt like this book was a lot of fluff and filler. There was just moments in it that, like I said, not only did it jump the shark, it jumped the shark 
so high that I feel like it's still floating somewhere around the atmosphere of Mars right now. Uh, I don't want to get into terrible specifics, but let's just say there are POV chapters in this series that you realize it was a character that never even existed. And that, to me, completely ruined the story. It broke the series so bad that after 2,800 pages of hardcover, I had no interest to read book five. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to take a break, calm down. I'm sure I'll feel differently about this as time goes by. That was a year ago. I've got a signed copy of The Burning White over there. No interest to read it, and I don't think that I ever will. <sighs> Now I realize that this might be an unpopular opinion. I'm not really sure, because it seems like most people I talk to really enjoy the series. A lot of them have said, uh, I thought that the ending could have been handled better, but I didn't dislike book four as much as you did. Then there are the loud ones like me. I think it might be a vocal minority on this one. And I, I base that, it's really weird to kind of base this stuff off Goodreads. I mean, what else can you really go off of? Amazon has really high reviews for them. Goodreads, you go on Goodreads and you look at the reviews for Blood Mirror, 35,000 reviews, and it has a 4.34 rating out of 5. So apparently someone liked it. A lot of people apparently liked it. Uh, I am not one of those. And in fact, I talk to people who finish the series and love it. They still say, yeah, Blood Mirror was a little bit of a hiccup. I just didn't hate it as much as you did. Yeah, it completely made the series just, it just broke the series for me. It's kind of like I said with uh, The Daylight War in Demon Cycle, that it broke the series enough to where I don't really have an interest in finishing it. So I don't really DNF series very often. But uh, yeah, this one, I can't think of a fantasy series that was so amazing that I really, within two books of that most amazing book, within two books, you can completely break a series for it. But, but this is the one. So what does that mean for the future of Brent Weeks and yours truly? Uh, look, I think when you've got two fantasy series now that I have DNF'd, to me, that is a major red flag, <laughs> obviously. Uh, here's the thing. I think whatever he writes next, look, the guy's talented. I have no gripes about the guy as a talented author. He's very, very talented, obviously. Uh, he's got eight huge books, you know, lots of sales. I'm pretty sure he's not struggling to put food on the table. He's got a huge fan base. There are people who are greatly anticipating his next series. I'm just not one of them. Here's the point. I don't trust him anymore. I do not trust him anymore. I trust that he can set up a world and make it absolutely awesome. He can make the action terrific. He can make terrific characters. He can make all these ideas and obviously a magic system. Look, if you're talking about comparing a magic system to Brandon Sanderson, you're doing something right. You've got talent. Your, your, your noodles are working right up here. I don't contest that. I just wonder if he knows how to stick the land. So here's the, the, the thing. Uh, fool me once is kind of how I'm approaching it, not strike one, two, three. With me in series that get this long, uh, two and you're out. And here's the thing. Am I writing him off forever? No. Here's the thing. If he writes another third series, and uh, I'm sure he will, he's, I think he's like a year younger than me, so I'm pretty sure he's going to keep writing. I'm pretty sure he's not packing it in. Uh, but he's, uh, he's going to write another series, and here's the deal. If he finishes a series, and people that I trust, you know who you are, People that I trust say, yes, he stuck the landing this time, then I'll give it a try. I'm going to base this off of word of mouth because I just can't trust him. I just cannot trust him anymore. And it's just really sad for a series that I thought was just absolutely amazing. Best two, best first two books of a fantasy series that I've read probably since Dark Tower or Stormlight Archive. I really felt like they were on level and man, did it fall off of a cliff. So. He's a magnificent world builder. His character work is very good. There are some qualms about his writing. So I'm not that guy. You guys know I don't really go on and on about prose. There are things where he'll write like this magnificent battle scene and he'll just be completely blown away by his ability and then he'll follow it up with like, oh, that's beautiful as shit. Or, hey, look at her tits. And it's just like, wow, you really are just like an eighth grader down there somewhere. But again, I, I don't care. That doesn't bother me as much. That's not, that's not world breaking for me, but plot is and and some of the plot choices he made just can't do it cannot do it anymore i cannot find the excitement if i had heard that burning white really corrected the ship and it just completely answered everything and it was awesome i probably would have went ahead and done it but even the most staunch lightbringer fans have said ah, it was okay it uh after after the newness wore off of course at first they were like oh it's amazing i love it and after the newness wore off they were kind of like ah it could have been better didn't really care for the endings kind of a weird choice to make it the end or whatnot but again hmm. i don't know i still have it 
it feels really weird to get four fifths of the series. I mean, and these are are small books. These are big, big books. It feels really weird to get that far and not want to finish it. It's just I can't think of any. I don't have enough time to read everything I want to read right now. I really don't think I want to be putting anything that's going to feel like work. And I still have such a negative attitude about it after Blood Mirror that I don't think I would be enjoying it. And it would feel like I'd be going into it with my arms crossed and I wouldn't be wanting to accept it. So that's why I haven't read it. But again, I'm not, I'm not writing it off for good. Just right now, I'd be stunned if it ever makes its way back. In the end, I just think it's kind of a shame. I felt like Lightbringer could have been one of the best modern fantasy series of this generation. And just he couldn't stick the landing. I, I mean, I don't, again, I don't know. I haven't read that fifth book. You might drop in the comments and tell me, crazy, how can you judge this when you haven't finished it? This is why. This is why. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Song of Susanna of this series. <laughs> If I hadn't invested so much time and energy into Dark Tower, uh, I, I don't know that I, yeah, I would have finished that. I mean, Stephen King, but again, this is an author I don't trust as much as I trust Stephen King, so I can't really make that comparison. But again, the, I think that the talent is there, and I think maybe his best stuff is yet to be written. So I still have some hope. I think he's very, very talented, so he can do this. Just right now, he's got to earn my trust back, and he doesn't He doesn't have it right now. So um your thoughts, guys. Drop in the comments. Let me know. I know a lot of you are going to jump on me and say, what are you talking about, Night Angel? It was amazing. Uh, I, maybe it is. Maybe it really, really just, uh, he just took off in that second book. I don't know. But uh, after a book and a quarter, it was enough for me to decide, nah, it's not for me. And that happens sometimes, guys. Sometimes a series just isn't for everybody. But for me, the real heartbreaker here is how much I love Lightbringer and how much it let me down. It's just a true, true heartbreak of a story. So uh, drop in the comments, guys. Let me know what you think. And uh, are you going to keep reading Brent Weeks? Let me know, and I will talk to you there.